Yo, Brosifs, this is your lovable baby boy, Brank, telling you guys that you need to check out Anchor.fm. It's the free one-stop shop to make your own podcast. You don't need any other recording software at all. You can record there and edit either on your phone or your computer, and Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. You don't need to hassle with getting URLs or Reddits or placing something so your podcast can be found. They'll do it. They'll put it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from them with no minimum listenership. Get that cash money now. It's everything you need to make a podcast. It's a one-stop shop, so go there today. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That is Anchor, A-N-C-H-O-R. Download the app or go to Anchor FM to get started. Peace. Super, 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 What's up, my brosifs? My name is Brank, and I'm here for Super BS. We're back from the dead and raid break some bread. Um, I am joined by my fellow compatriot, as always. Jay, what is your what are you going by today? I'm just uh, I'm I'm big boy Jay. Joined by Jay. Branky yeah, Stanky Brank. here. Um. I am, uh, you know, I'm getting to be a bigger boy. It's uh, Halloween. I'm getting to pull on big boy pants so I can watch those scary flicks, okay? I'm not afraid anymore. Yeah, there you go. Um, t- today, we're joined by an extra special guest from Mega Cat Studios. Who are we joined by? Hey, guys. I'm Mina. I'm one of the community managers over at Mega Cat Studios. It's great to be here with you guys. Awesome. Well, we're glad to have you. This is a new thing. You're going to join us for this show, and then hopefully we'll get to talk a little bit about your guys' games and the stuff that you're working on and all that nice, sweet-ish. Have you guys been playing some games at all? Is there anything? I know we hate games here. This is a podcast mostly about every single thing besides video games. I'm mainly working on my Star Trek fan fiction everybody knows about. Um, big time, <laughs> number one. Uh, as long as there's Captain Spork, uh, he's everybody's favorite character. So, but we, enough of that. We do that every week. We always talk about Spock. Um, Mina, what have you been playing? Um, so, in all my downtime, I've actually been spreading my time over three different games. Um, on my okay. phone, I'm playing I love it. some weird puzzle game called Sentence. It's actually great. Not to spoil it too much, but basically you're a cop that's under house arrest. Spoiled! And- yeah, so, so so you're trying to figure out uh, who's framing you. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, well, a, it's, it's pretty addicting. Spoil it, spoil it. We got to know who's framing you. I haven't beat it yet. <laughs> I, I suspect it's the daughter's boyfriend, but I don't know. He's always the one. It's always the daughter's <laughs> he's, boyfriend. He's guilty. 100% yeah. of the time. So how, he's guilty. How does the game work, though? Do you? I mean, what's, what's like, the, the gameplay like? So the gameplay, you're kind of... You're kind of doing text messaging within the game. You have options to strengthen or weaken the relationships. And then every once in a while, you have to try to hack into uh, different kinds of servers. So once you're inside of the server, it's kind of like a color matching connection kind of thing that you're doing. But it gets extremely difficult as the levels go forward. So it's all about discovering the story, hacking through these servers, and getting the information to clear your name. Did you play Florence? This sounds a lot like Florence to me. It, instead of not being the same as like it's not a detective game, but like you do kind of mini game style puzzles to progress a, a story forward. Did you happen to play that iOS game? I haven't played it yet. That actually sounds right up my alley, though. So I'm definitely going to have to check it out. Yeah, everybody loves it. It's also on Switch if you don't like playing on iOS. But um, yeah, I, I think that sounds like a perfect phone game. And I've heard nothing but great things about the soundtrack. That's awesome. How how much longer do you think you have till you finish the game? I honestly have no idea because it doesn't actually mm. have... You know how in some games you might like see how many quests you have left? It doesn't give you that yeah. kind of information. And at okay. least judging from the story, I think I'm still pretty much in the beginning. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, that's neat. Is it a fairly long game? Like, have you been playing for like an hour? or Because, I mean, phone games... Sometimes you only want to play for like 10 minutes. So the cool thing about this is that it happens in real time. So you're going to have, you're going to have to wait for your lives to recharge. It usually will take like, I don't know, maybe like three or four hours to get all five lives back. So I've been playing for like three days straight in like 20 minute increments. (laughs) 
Yeah, that's unless you buy the booster, right? The booster gives you infinite lives, <laughs> and then you can bypass all of the time uh, requirements. Yeah, what's the Definitely, micro but I, I save my money for uh, for console games and PC games. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> is is that an option though? I just have to ask because every time I hear about like real time stuff, I always imagine like, hey, they also need to make money too. So maybe there's a way to bypass that with money. Oh, definitely. They do have boosters where you can either buy um, power ups or extra hearts, that kind of thing. It's kind of pricey. So, <laughs> OK. Yeah, it's 99 cents for iOS. That's ridiculous. No, I'm just joking. I, I don't know what they cost, but it definitely always seems like we have such a low tolerance for pricing of phone or mobile games like compared to console gaming. It's like this is two dollars. I don't want to pay two dollars for this. So yeah, it's, that's I, I don't know if you feel the same way. That's how I feel. Like when we have Florence right now, it's two ninety nine. I'm like, yeah, yeah, right. I'll pay ten dollars on Switch. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> um, you mentioned you've been playing some other stuff. It sounds like they're both spooky, scary style games, which we're all about here in the month of Halloween. What what uh what is uh the spookiest, scariest game you've been playing this week? Ever play? Oh, recently played. I would have to say that it was Resident Evil Seven. I had actually started it when it first came out and i actually got so freaked out by it that i put the game down <laughs> and I, I totally know how you feel <laughs> yeah yeah i you. just recently completed it which i'm super proud of i didn't give myself a heart attack but man are the resident evil series creepy games man yeah the seventh is the scariest i i tried playing in the middle of the day and i still felt kind of yeah. like uh it's, should i do this yeah well it's funny how like they started out as horror games and they kind of moved into the action genre like i remember resident evil yeah. 5 being just a pure straight up action game and now with these remakes they're moving back into that thing like you know i was, I was telling uh brank here at the on the last super bs that when i was sitting there playing the remake of resident evil 2 like i had to stop because i was getting such bad anxiety from playing it yeah, oh. that's. Oh, go ahead, Mina. Oh no, yeah, definitely. One of my one of my earlier video game memories is back on the PC. There is one of the Resident Evils that you're walking down a hallway, and there's a jump scare where these arms come out at you. And I swear to God, I am still traumatized to this day. Oh yeah. Yeah, is that a? So arms come out at you. Is that Resident Evil Two? I think it's Resident Evil Two. I might be wrong. Yeah, because I remember feeling that way with Resident Evil 1, the remake on GameCube, where the dog breaks through the window, and it's just like, even though it doesn't, you know, it's not really high fidelity in modern day graphics, it's still like, I remember being freaked out at that moment. But yeah, that, that, that series is great. Does it ever get less scary? I've heard it kind of becomes manageable later on. Honestly, it, it all depends on, on the mood that you're in. I mean... Mm -hmm. No matter how many playthroughs, if you're playing at 3 o'clock in the morning mm, with your headphones yeah. on, everything's dark. I feel like the horror factor just keeps coming back each time. Yeah, I can't. Why would you do that to yourself? Don't play at 3 in the morning. Play at 3 in the afternoon. That's when you should be playing horror games. You Everybody knows you that. You can't play <laughs> horror games in the afternoon. Like, yeah, it. I, I understand. Uh, like, yeah, I do. No, you can physically do it, but I understand, like, having to play with a light on, but just it ruins the experience. It's like, for me, like... And a nightlight. And, I put a nightlight night light. as well. Like, for me, it's me. like the lighting has to be good. I have to be just, like, close enough to the TV to not have to, like, squint and to just have the perfect gaming experience. Okay. Well, that's you're going to scare yourself. Yeah. On a less spooky note, Mina, you've been playing another ghoulish game, kind of a hellish piece what's that oh what's what's your favorite piece so of gaming that's action based you guys might recognize this game title i have been playing doom eternal Whoa. yeah the music is awesome in oh that my game God, yeah. i played a little bit on games pass that is so cool the entire doom series is amazing i was blessed to be introduced to the doom series from the beginning i a friend of mine actually yeah. has had me play every single doom title and the oh. mods um, okay. <laughs> and I, I gotta say, the, the music in Doom Eternal is just so great. I mean, I would literally put that as a soundtrack for, like, my workout or something like that. Oh, yeah. I can't remember the name of the, uh, the composer, but it's just, uh, it's Mick or something. Um, it is just so powerful and so, like, heavy rock. Like, it's, uh, yeah, I, I think I enjoyed the soundtrack, maybe even more than playing it. What are, are you playing on PC or are you playing it on console or? I'm playing it on PC. Um, okay. 
I played them all on PC actually, so I'm not way, yeah. I'm not sure how it plays on console, but I do imagine that I'll eventually end up end up buying it on there. <laughs> yeah, it's I I don't if you have an Xbox if if you do they have it's on Games Pass so it's like free there. That's how I ended up playing it. Um, I didn't get very far into the Doom 2016, so I was like, hey, I'll I'll wait. But uh, you know if you're a big you know PlayStation fan, I think with PS5 it'll probably look pretty nice there too. But if you've got a good PC, I mean that's the way to go with most games and it's mick gordon was the composer's name that guy is a chief um how far are you into doom eternal did you finish it already i have not finished it yet and we actually just got that new dlc that came out that's right so oh, ancient of yeah. gods how is or it whatever or ancient gods it is i mean i i can't even begin to describe it you guys just need to start playing it it's so great i mean the entire doom series has always been fun but now with the updated graphics it is just amazing amazing what do you think of the critiques like i've read recently some people are critiquing that there's been a lot more story in the ancient gods so some people are kind of like frustrated because you know doom's mainly about just ripping up demons um what do you i mean it did you feel like there was too much story or is it okay and people are just kind of being like too critical so me personally i love story driven games so i saw it as a benefit um, as okay. a plus, you know, and the truth of the matter is, is that there is story behind Doom. They, mm-hmm. uh, not all of it's canon, but you can actually find the Doom books out there. And there's a couple of different fan fictions that are out as well, because there are people out there that have been craving for more details. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's just a matter of personal taste, you know? There's, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I know in the, the last Doom game, uh, you could walk around like they would give you hints of like the, the Doom Slayer's background and stuff like that if you hadn't been familiar with it before. Yeah. And you can definitely find uh, Jay's Doom fan fiction on doom.fan.biz. He's uh, writing it right now as we <laughs> speak. Org. He's a big time. It's a dot org, all right? Never it's, pl- a, it's a serious never... website. It's a dot org. He's never played any of the Doom games, but he feels like he should attempt writing fan fiction first. Um, <laughs> Mina, that sounds awesome. I cannot wait to hear more about your experience with gaming. But real quick, Jay, what have you been playing? Uh, so I have been diving back into uh, Blair Witch Project. So I know I talked about this a little bit last week. Too scary. I Too So scary. I, well, I keep hoping that it'll be scary. And it's really just a dude walking around a... A forest like that's what the game is and you have to like stop you pet the dog most of the game revolves the, like the mechanics revolve around like petting your dog praising your dog telling your dog to chase something like it's it's a game about it's like what was that game sounds like good game <laughs> what was that game on uh it was on switch or ds like nintendogs right where you like raise the animals like that's yeah blair witch and nintendogs are the same that, game. no it pretty series. much is the same game i mean except like in this you're walking around a forest looking for a lost child so i mean it's I, I don't know i keep hoping that it'll be scary it'll get scary but it it doesn't they're just like really relying heavily on the blair witch project lore and it's just not really doing it for me so i think Nina, I, are you a huge uh, blair witch fan when the movie first came out i was about it it freaked me out i I w- I'm going to admit this. I was one of the people that bought the whole it's a true story mm, thing at okay. first yeah that was like me but with i played the game activity. <laughs> I played the game though, and, and I have to agree, it's it's not it's not my thing. It's I I need a little bit more action involved. Yeah, it, yeah. It's just so it's it's paced so slowly, and I keep waiting for something to happen. And they like they keep giving you little tiny morsels to kind of chase to keep you playing, but it's just it's not worth the time that it's taking to get there for me. So I think I might be uh be done with it at this point. And he made it a whole 10 minutes into the game, folks. I played for three <laughs> hours, all right? Come on. He bet, he Give bet me a the break dogs, here, man. And then he got, gave up. Got two kids um, here. Give me a break. <laughs> yeah, petting the dogs is about as far as he makes it in any game. As soon as he's done with that, he finishes the game. There's no, um, yeah. So you, you, what, what you else played you, a couple games. Uh, what else have you been playing? So I have actually, like, I've been playing a mobile game called Bubble King. And so it's like, uh, what was a Bubble Bobble, where you have the little oh, like dinosaur great. things and they shoot the balls all over the place. Played that, got up to level 84, got stuck, can't play anymore. So I uh, might just have to okay. restart that one. Uh, did a little bit more into Night in the Woods, got to the next part of the game, uh, fed some stray rats, uh, watched somebody. You find who committed the murder? I no, so I just saw the murderer and he just picked up a little kid and ran off with him. So like I'm at the part where like 
you know, you get all stoked to go into the forest to try to find this thing. So uh, I'm there right now. And uh, I'm hoping okay. that I'm close to the end of the game because I feel like I've been playing this thing forever. And, okay, uh, well, it's a glowing yeah. review, it sounds like. I yeah, can't wait well, to finish this. I so played it way too long. I, no, well, here's the thing. Like, I really like it. I just feel like it's repetitive. Because you kind of, yeah. like, Have you, you? you wake up and you just talk to the same people over and over again until you get the achievement for, like, getting the full conversations. Because you're Achievement Hunter. Mina, you said you like story games. Did you try Night in the Woods? It's kind of made by a small team as well. Kinda like I have not tried it. Now you're, now you're <laughs> going to make me go buy a whole bunch of games. <laughs> well, uh, that's Sorry, that's what we do here. Yeah, if, is, if this you, is a game buying podcast. <laughs> if you have Games Pass, you can play it for free. But it's, it's, it's a very unique game in the fact that like it is story driven. But it also like hits a lot of you know things that... I mean, I don't know, like if you fall in the millennial category, but a lot of things that millennials have and still do struggle with, so it kind of like hits home for me. Well, yeah, I I, I hate to admit it, but I am a millennial, <laughs> so <laughs> I definitely think it could it could what? be something that I would like. Yeah, yeah then yeah. I mean, this game is is it's it's fun. It's worth the time. You play as a cat, um, and it's got a bunch of mini games in it, so I think it's worth playing. It's fun. All you, you had to say was cat. I'm sold. That's it. I'm definitely <laughs> yeah. getting it. Yeah, download it right now. <laughs> All the cats. And uh, if you have Games Pass on PC, it, you can get it there too. So it's that's why we talk about this service because we're actually a Games Pass sales service. That's what our podcast is primarily for. We're uh, supported by and Microsoft. We, yeah, so we sometimes we bring it up a lot. That's we why. interview cats too sometimes. Um. And we interview cats. That's yeah. uh, it's really really. Uh, you know, intense interviews. Yeah. You mentioned another game that you've been playing. Uh, we mentioned, uh, real quick though, we mentioned last time you were part of an esports league. So this is what that game's about. Wait, say that again? You just created an esports league. We talked about that two weeks ago. So I wanted to bring that up. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I'm, uh, the, the matches all started. So let me, can I rant for a minute? Do we have time for me to rant for like two minutes? Can I do that? Uh, two minutes, that, can you I give guess. Me that? Can I'll I have start the start a timer? For two minutes? All right, so okay, let, timer let, me, on. let me talk about esports leagues in high school. They don't regulate how good the players are. You know how, like, when you join a, a rec team for, like, softball or hockey or something, and they usually have, like, hey, you can be in the beginner league, the intermediate league, advanced league, whatever. So for esports, they don't have that. So yesterday we got into this Rocket League match, and we just happened to get matched up with somebody who was ranked number 20 in the U.S. in Rocket League. And so by the time three minutes had passed on the timer, we were losing 31 to zero. Sounds like you need to get a better team. Okay? I, <laughs> you need to, I don't It's just to break like, all those kids hearts. They're like, hey, we give out all these scholarships. So you pay all this money to like have your team play. And then they just they don't regulate anything on in either of the leagues. So there's two big leagues. There's like play VS and the high school esports league. And they just they don't regulate things. And I think that's going to be like a, a boon to them in the future. Anyways, uh, so while I was getting ready to play, do get you know the esports games going, I played a little bit of Smite. Didn't not really like it that much. Um, too much going on for me. Don't think I'll play it again. But uh, you know, I you I love it. I can see you heard it here <laughs> first. I can see the appeal. You know, they have all the different classes, and they have the. Um, it's hard to play on a keyboard, but they have different classes. They have different uh, uh, different types of maps different type it's like you know how in final fantasy 11 how they everyone had different jobs you had like your tank and your mage and your your little real brawlers. quick mina have you played final fantasy 11 mm, i have backseat watched it i haven't personally played it myself my friend was playing it recently Okay, cool. Because I haven't played it, so when, oh, geez. when okay. Jada said uh, how yeah. you know how in Final Fantasy XI, sorry, well, we, I don't know who he was talking. We talk to. about Final Fantasy a lot, so I just figured you did. Anyways, like everyone has a specific job they have to stick to, and if you move outside of that job, like you just get wrecked. So I don't really have the patience for it. Anyways, well, Branky, let me ask you a question. Yeah, what you got to ask? Him. What What have you been playing? Well, before I get into what I've been playing, I have the perfect solution to your esports dilemma. If you've watched the seminal classic Little Giants from 1994, if you remember, they recruit some really good kids from the neighborhood for their esports teams. That's what you do, IRL. It's really easy. I, uh, you walk around the neighborhood. I have actually find the kids playing Rocket League. Yeah, well, I've actually been sending Emilio Estevez emails, but uh, he hasn't gotten back to me, so. 
That's Mighty Ducks. This oh, is Rick hey. Moranis. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I actually haven't played as much as I normally do. I've played a game called Scourgebringer. Um, no. Do either of you know what that is? No. No idea. Okay, okay so it is an indie game. It's a uh, roguelike. It's kind of like a roguelite almost. But, uh, yeah, it was on Games Pass. I thought I'd give it a whirl. It's really, really fun. It's a 2D game. Kind of reminds me of Flint Hook, which I played a lot in uh Didn't you, you, you didn't like that game, if I remember correctly. No, actually, I really like Flint Hook. I didn't like that they did this thing that a lot of roguelikes do where the final step of the game is you have to finish a run where you complete all of the bosses at the same... Like, you have to go in order, finish each boss, and then get to the final boss and beat him. And that makes your playtime, like, 30 minutes. So I don't really enjoy that um, because it's like, oh, okay, there's no progression. You get to this part, you lose, and you have to start over from scratch, and there's nothing that you can do about it. Um, so anyways, that's why I don't play a lot of the games like this, but, uh, Scorchbringer is pretty cool. It's really fast, really fluid. Um, like a lot of other roguelikes, roguelites, I probably won't play very much more of it. I mean, I mean, have you played Hades? Nope. I have not played Hades. One okay. of my streamers is actually doing that for his variety stream. So I'm actually okay. scheduled to check it out tonight. Okay, you should check it out. It is, uh, I think it's probably the best roguelite game that they've ever made. I would say before that, maybe Rogue Legacy was a really, really close contender. Um, yeah, so it's hard after playing Hades to come to this game that's it's still really good, really well made, beautiful, uh, quite a bit of fun, and be like, oh, well, I have this other one that's in a lot of ways better and has a really cool story and all these other progression elements and... I could choose to finish that or play more of this. So it, it's worth giving a shot. If you've got a Games Pass on PC or Xbox, it's free. If not, you know, I think it's like 12 bucks. It's really, really neat. Um, really, really beautiful graphics to pixel art stuff. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I've just been kind of tooling around with Fez. I assume all of us have played Fez, hopefully. No? Mina, have you played Fez? I keep saying no to everything you're asking me. <laughs> oh, no! And uh, Jay, have you played Fez? No, I have not. Okay, I am alone in this. Anyways, isn't, Fez is incredible. Isn't there a character it's on that 70s old. show named Fez? Yes, that is actually the game. It's about okay, the character I, I just, on that yeah, 70s show. Yeah, I just want to make sure we're Fez. on the same page. Um, that's, yeah, how you, you nailed it, man. They made right, a cool. game about him. All right. Really good game, too. <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, I talked about that on the last episode with uh, Veet Veet. And, um, yeah, it was. It's just such a great game. They made a documentary about it called uh, Indie Game the Movie, where they cover four indie games. And yeah, it reminded me, man, I should play this. That's only available on PC or PlayStation 4, so it's kind of not on a lot of consoles. So I had to like turn on my PS4 for the first time in a while and try that out. But yeah, there's uh, there's not been a ton of stuff. We're you, about to get in the game season. You made that sound like it was such a chore. I had to turn on my PS4. Yeah, I got to like, walk hey, all the you're, way. Cause here's the thing. You're the only person I know that will stop playing an Xbox game because it takes longer than five seconds to load into the, the game screen. Well, you know, some of us have, you know, five seconds is a lot of time. We don't <laughs> have five seconds. If we had a dollar for every five seconds we'd have, we'd be rich. Seriously. Okay? Wow. Wow. That'd be a lot of dollars. Um, Wait. Yeah, it's... <laughs> or not that many dollars. Yeah, I you know, I don't play my PS4 a ton unless there's like a big first party game. Uh it's a great console, but I just ended up playing more stuff on Xbox. So yeah, I had to walk uh five feet, okay? That's a lot that's a huge challenge for me, okay? On this show everybody knows I cannot walk five feet. I don't like walking five feet. I hate it. Um so yeah, um if I have to switch a disc, everybody knows I will freak out. That's why I never finished Mass Effect 3. Um, but yeah, so I turned it on and it was cool. I am very excited though for the next consoles and hopefully getting some of this sweet, sweet load times in and hopefully getting some new games. Uh, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, but Mina, are there any big holiday titles you're looking forward to? Well, cyberpunk, obviously I'm super excited yeah. about if it ever Same. happens. <laughs> I know. I'm really worried about that. Hey, it's got delayed again. Like I'm February. expecting that. I'm still calling it February. Oh, I hope you're wrong. Did you guys you're... actually see that tweet that came out the other day? I forget what the person was asking, uh, but they were asking about like an exact date for s some sort of upgrade. And then um, the cyberpunk marketing team writes back it's like, well, we can't give you an exact date because we're not very good with those. Almost yeah. died. <laughs> At least. Yeah, honest. it's it. It is a bummer that 
I think it's going to come out. You know, I've, I just saw an ad for it today with Keanu Reeves where it said Gone Gold. So I would hope that they're not going to change it there because it's got a date on it. It's got all that stuff. But yeah, I, that's the big one I'm waiting for. I am very excited for Watch Dogs Legion. Um, Aiden Pierce, yeah, man. All, they added some Aiden Pierce story yeah, that's, in there. That's why. Everybody loves Watch Dogs 1 no, because well, Aiden here's Pierce. The he thing, was such though. a dynamic character. All right. So here's the thing about that. It makes me excited because, like, I, I have a hard time latching onto games that have multiple protagonists. You know, I okay. have the same thing when, like, I'm reading books or watching a movie. So the fact that, like, I can play as Aiden Pierce and they have story, like, spe and dialogue specifically catered to that character makes me feel like I could enjoy this game that I wasn't sure I was going to enjoy. And his nephew's going to get captured again. So that's your job is to rescue his nephew a second time. Um, yeah, I... For me, like, whatever, that's neat. He's in it. I'm just really excited to see what they do with the dynamic character. Um, I guess not creation, but dynamic character, like, choice. Uh, I don't know if you've seen their ridiculous uh, ad they made with a bunch of comedians where they, instead of NPCs, they have APCs. All are playable characters. Uh, yeah, I, we'll see if it's successful. Have you been following this one, Mina? I have not been following it quite as closely as I usually do. I did see an ad for it recently. It looks really yeah. great to me. I'm I'm interested in it. We'll see if I actually purchase it or if I just piggyback off of somebody else. <laughs> yeah, it's I, I really struggle with buying Ubisoft games day one at launch because they go on sale in like 10 days normally. So it's really hard for me to be like, hey, let's spend 60 bucks today when I could get whatever the craziest edition is a month down the road for literally 30 bucks or whatever, you know? So, so hold on. Let me, let me stop. Mina, just let me explain something about uh, our friend Brank here. So, you know, like when you go to the grocery cool. store, <laughs> do you, you know, when you go to the grocery <laughs> store and you have like the old lady that will only buy things she has coupons for. Yeah. yeah. That is uh that is our friend Brank here with video games. He will only buy <laughs> things that are on sale or he has like reward points for, if that old lady was the coolest old lady or in Watch Dogs Legion, then yeah, I agree with you there. Hey, man, there's nothing wrong with that. I love coupons, okay? Like, absolutely <laughs> love them. And if, if there were more video game coupons, I, that's that we should start a petition. Can more we, game coupons. We, like, I would cut them out of magazines for sure. Oh, this yeah, podcast just pivoted, okay? It is now a video game coupon podcast where we demand, nay, we... Well, demand is the strongest word I could use. So we now demand even stronger that they create video game coupons. You've heard it here, folks. It's, it's going to happen. Um, yeah. No, I will buy stuff like at launch if it's Mario or Zelda or I know I'm not going to be able to get it on sale. But it's really hard to be like, hey, this is, you know, I'll buy Cyberpunk at launch. But I'm not going to pay for a game where it's like, yeah, this is going to drop in price like tomorrow. Because then I just feel like a sucker. And then, you know, they send the email to me like, hey, you're a sucker. Did you see this? You sucker. Yeah, straight and, from uh, Ubisoft. Like that. You're a sucker. That's what they say. Yeah, they, uh, the Ubisoft marketing team has my email. S they sincerely. Like me taunts. <laughs> <laughs> I do got to say uh, one thing, though. Like, yeah. games have gotten crazy, crazy expensive. I was looking at some Ultimate Editions. They were like at $189, but these Ultimate Editions were only yeah. downloadable. There was no actual, like disc or box or anything i mean for 189 dollars i'm i better be getting like a figurine or something yeah, you know what i the, mean what's the point like i mean why if you're not because people usually buy like the ultimate editions of things because they come with something like what's the point if you're just doing it online i it is a really strange thing i saw that i think the cyberpunk ultimate edition has like this weird thing where you can buy it without the game if you just want the like the swag and then you yeah. pay See, that's... 20 bucks more if you want the game. Well, that was like um uh Ubisoft when Assassin's Creed Odyssey came out, right? They had like you can buy the ultimate edition, but it really all it really came with was like some DLC, some extra skins and you couldn't there was nothing like physical, no figures, no like booklets, nothing like nothing that I feel is worth paying $150 for. Well, that's something you got to email them about, okay? I'll give you their email <laughs> right after the show so you can send them a bunch <laughs> of emails. Um, okay, well, we got a lot of news to talk about, and then we're going to talk a lot about Mega Cats. So we're going to run through that news real quick. We'll be back right after this. Well, laddy freaking da. We are back, and we got a lot of news to talk about, and it's next-gen season, okay? So the big news for today and inside baseball we are recording this way earlier than you are listening like five days earlier than this will go up 
everybody just got their PS5s. So by the time you listen to it, a lot of people probably have told us what the PS5 is like. But I've seen the boxes. They're huge. They're the size of a house. Hope you can fit through your doors. It's going to be refrigerator size. Um, not actually that large. But Mina, have you seen the pictures of the PS5 with how big that system is? I have seen the pictures. I have my own thoughts on what it looks like. Um, yeah. What? Like, who did, like, okay, no offense yeah. to, be, be, you know, PlayStation, but w what is this? It looks like a router or, like, it, you know. Yeah. It looks like yeah. it was designed by Dyson. Yeah. Hey, don't hate on I... my vacuums, man. I love <laughs> Dyson. Did, uh, well, hopefully yeah. they play PlayStation 5 games. Yeah, or your <laughs> fridge will. Yeah, I uh, I totally agree with you. I, I don't love the Series X, but comparatively, I think it looks... I mean, Series X is like a refrigerator or a large computer. It's the I don't know who designed the PS5. I just don't know who it's for. I don't know what the idea or thought process was behind it. Make a giant router that's huge that's not going to fit anywhere. And then if you want to have the disc version, make it even uglier because it's got like a disc drive bolted on. It is bonkers. Like, I just don't understand it. But, yeah. So if you want that, and we just talked about how much we love it. If you want that, it will be on sale in about a month's time from now. Uh, a little bit less than that. Ladies and, and gentlemen, everybody will we tell us about actually it. just lost our Sony sponsorship. Thank you for that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> that was uh, that's my bad. Sony normally comes and checks in on us, make sure we have all the things. We have everybody on this podcast, including me, just got a PS5 in the mail, but they're coming to take them <laughs> back from all of us. Mine was taped um, under right my chair now. like Oprah. <laughs> I was taped under my chair. <laughs> they can send it to me. I'll just put a box over it, my PS5. So you know, with, with air holes, obviously, so it doesn't overheat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I I really when I saw that the first time I was baffled. I still am. I don't know who the designer was on it or if that was like you you wonder like you're a community manager, you said, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know? Yeah. You wonder if this was like marketed or like uh brainstormed or corporate speak to death. Like maybe they all got in the room and they're like, "Well, we need to make it look like this." And then that's the monstrosity or if they just had somebody with no oversight. I'm always curious. Like, what do you think? Was no oversight or tons of corporate oversight that led to the ps5 i, I want to say that it was corporate oversight it just looks it looks too much like a router for it to just be somebody's brainchild yeah it i yeah i totally agree with you i mean unless they chose somebody who's not a graphic designer and they chose like guy who you know normally delivers the mail and then he had to sketch it on paper that is also Whoa. the likelihood <laughs> And I've he was only uh, allowed to sketch routers, so he, had to, he couldn't, free, my couldn't freehand, yeah. so he had to trace. Who knows? I mean, maybe after launch day, we'll get an announcement that Sony was actually bought by Netgear. And, uh... Netgear. <laughs> they love the Nighthawk. That's it. That's their favorite <laughs> Wi-Fi router, okay? They had to get a new Nighthawk out there. Um, yeah, so PS5 is coming. We're going to hear all about it. But the other big news from this week, and it, this is more just, like, weird. This is, as a community manager, Mina, you were probably – have heard this and this is like one of those things where i think twitter is both powerful and scary um one of the creative directors i want to say at stadia alex hutchinson who uh, was the director on assassin's creed 3 he recently tweeted that um streamers should pay the pay the rights or the licensing to play their games on their stream because they're making so much money from it and that those streamers don't really own the game that's a license and google stadia as we all know there is nothing physical that anyone owns, and they are actually paying for a license, so they were not stoked with this guy calling out other consoles saying that they don't own stuff because it just brings back to light, like, hey, you don't own anything on Stadia. This is literally, like, the lowest common denominator. You might get your license revoked tomorrow. So it was kind of interesting to see the pushback on that to the point where they literally like, hey, Google here, we don't actually agree with what this person said. This is just, uh, you know, him speaking freely. Um, but yeah, have you ever experienced anything, Mina, where you guys were like, should we say anything or do we need to make sure somebody doesn't talk that's part of our company? <laughs> you know, honestly, that's one of my, my big responsibilities at work is to make sure that we make the appropriate comments and hold our yeah. tongues with others. You know, there, there's times that I want to say things and I just think back, I'm like, you know what? No, I need, I need to be able to eat. <laughs> yeah, and and you definitely have to put you have to put your company first when it comes to that, especially when you're in that high of a position. You can't just you can't just say whatever you want. And I talk about it with my teammates a lot, just to remember that if you're on your personal profiles, just make sure that you state that it's your own personal opinion. 
Yeah, for sure. I think that's kind of crazy when somebody launches into a rant like that, especially somebody as like high profile as Alex, um, to then not even think like, oh, hey, I'm working for a team that's literally just selling licenses that could go down. You know, I'm sure he was a big uh, whatever whatever that Google social experiment was that got canceled after like one year. Um, Google Spaces or Google uh, shoot. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Was it the it Google was like, Plus thing? Is that what you're talking Google about? Google Plus, that is it. Oh, yeah, the yeah. one that that got canceled after, uh, I think it actually lasted a bit. Um, it lasted till uh, April 19, or 2019. So it did last like some time, but it's still like Google is notorious for canceling things they don't like, which is in their right. But when you've paid $60 for those the games that are part of that and you're concerned... Like, you definitely don't want to call to attention anything where it's like, well, people don't own these games at all anyways. Okay. You know, they're just licenses. Let's let's like, oh, let's talk about up. that for a minute, though. Like, how do, I mean, how do you feel about the idea of, of streamers having to, like, pay money to the people that own the game? Because I feel like you're paying. I mean, I, I don't know how the state I think Stadia is like a subscription service, right? Uh, no. I mean, it has a subscri subscription service as well, but you can pay for the games outright too. The subscription okay. service is so, I mean, only if, if you want to get like one or two of their. If you're games. purchasing the game, I, I I honestly think that you should be able to do whatever you want with it, especially if you're playing and you're making other people want to go out and buy that game. Hmm. But that's I one hundred percent agree on. with that. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. Especially you know, in my position, I I deal with a lot of streamers, and it just seems crazy to me because I'm I'm constantly every day looking for streamers to give them keys because i want them yeah. to play my games i want them to be on twitch doing that because that's that's promotional publicity for me that helps my yeah. company so coming out with a comment like that and and making it even harder for these streamers because becoming a streamer is not an easy thing anybody thinks that like okay i can just buy a couple of uh you know things for my setup and just get jump on there but getting noticed and keeping a fan base mm -hmm. is already hard enough and when they start out they they're not making any money whatsoever exactly yeah it's kind of like becoming a rock star um i i think in some ways it's very comparable in other ways it's not but it is that idea of like you have to build a fan base and you have to hope that those people are going to stay and for streamers from my knowledge it seems like a lot of them to keep their fan bases because we all have short attention spans they have to play for like ridiculous amounts of time so if you consider a job i mean we're talking about like 60 hours a week now you also video have games, to ha so. yeah and you also have to have like really good people skills too like you have to be able to talk to them and like interact with them like that's that's too much stimulus for me you know i'm good at, I, I love like playing games and like recording my videos and putting them up online but like having to interact with an entire community like that. I respect that because I can't do it. Yeah. I mean, I totally disagree with you. I'm about to do the exact opposite. I'm going to make a cussing uh, stream where all I do is I wait for people to join and I cuss at them for a while. And so and I'll still become the biggest streamer out there. Okay. Cuspcast.biz. Um, you can check it out. <laughs> I like the dot biz. Okay. That's the one that I don't think we use enough in society. Yeah, so of course. That's why I'm always of course. Into that. Um, after the Stadia thing, something that also was announced kind of today, like right around the PS5 news, was that Gears 5, a game that both uh, Jay and I have been playing or finished, uh, it's getting a story DLC, which has not happened with the series before, but it's about like a B team, essentially, of Gears, like a B tier yeah, Gears the, squad so that's from the comic. They're the ones that are featured in it, in the comic book and also in the, what's it, the escape mode? Like you play as this team. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that. I think you're. I think you nailed it. I think it's Escape or something. But yeah, I never played it. Did yeah, you? So, no, I, I never played that mode. But I mean, this is the the team you play. The ones that were featured in the uh, in the trailer that we saw at E3 a couple years ago. But you play as them. They're like the ones okay. that go in. They do. They're like um, the Suicide Squad. Like they go in and they do all the things that nobody else wants to do. I love how I just googled uh, Gears Five Escape, and the first thing I came up with. Is, Gears 5 escape mode is the least entertaining part of the game. That's from Polygon. <laughs> nice. uh, always glowing reviews. Uh, yeah, neither of us played it. Uh, Mina, have you played any of the Gears series? So I Gears was War? absolutely in love be with Gears 1 to 3. Um, mm -hmm. Played them obsessively. 4 yeah. was meh. 
Yeah, was it wasn't my favorite. And then by the time Gears 5 came around, I kind of was like, you know what? I need a break from you guys. I'll, I'll revisit you guys later. It's on my to-do list. I actually have a gaming list of games that I'm going to eventually try. I moved it down a little bit, but, you know, I'm willing to give it another shot. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what type of PC you're running, but if, if it's decent, like I've heard it's beautiful on PC. It, run, it ran really nice on my Xbox One X. Uh, it's definitely like a uh performance piece if nothing else like i would say just give the first hour a shot yeah you know, it's I, you should be blown away it's very it's it's very artistic but it's also like repetitive and like more so than the other entries before it but it's it the, on the plus side like you said you do enjoy story driven games it is very uh heavy on story and gears lore yeah and uh, everybody loves lore in Gears of War. That's the number one thing they ask for. They actually hate the gameplay. Um, that's what Jay said to everybody. Uh, and then I know that this is the main thing that everybody who listens to this podcast loves. We are way about legal stuff. We just love <laughs> lawyers and laws and lawsuits and all the laws. That's why we talk about Fortnite all the time. We love law. Um, there's been a recent lawsuit from the company known as Human Head, or was it the previous company? So, right, yeah, right. Between Human it, Head? Yeah, it was Ragnarok Games, and they amended a lawsuit against Human Head Studios where they're suing Bethesda hmm. for $100 million over an alleged intentional sabotage of Rune 2, which was made by Ragnarok. Uh, so, basically, I guess someone went to, to Bethesda and showed them, like, the threat that Rune 2 posed to them, and uh, they quote-unquote sabotaged it and then i guess uh bethesda ended up buying the company that made rune 2 went out of business uh the day that okay. the game was released and then bethesda bought them up and all of their assets that same exact day so i don't know if that sounds shady to anybody out there but it seems a little bit shady but also like i don't think that this is like a very small thing with the big publicity bethesda has gotten for being purchased by microsoft so i don't really know yeah if it's gonna well, matter in the end well, what exactly does sabotage mean in this case? Yeah. Like, what what did they do? Did they like, <laughs> you, you know, like how did this happen? So, well, here's let me. See. I'm I'm gonna read the story by our, our friend uh, Jordan Oleman from IGN. He said, uh, "So the lo friend. lawsuit. <laughs> I don't actually know him. I was just saying. Uh, the lawsuit was originally filed in December of 2019." Uh, Ragnarok claims that the developers intentionally abandoned the game upon launch and refused to turn over the source code. So the publisher is seeking damages and re uh, restitution. The reason Bethesda, Softworks, and Zenimax Media are now involved in the suit is that Human Head Studios went out of business a day after the game's launch, only to be mm -hmm. absorbed by Be Bethesda and reopened as Roundhouse Studios on the same exact day. So that's mm. what makes it sound like it's kind of uh, a little bit shady. I don't. I mean, I don't know how how game how company sales go but uh you know it all mm. seemed rather fast yeah i mean i'm looking at pictures of rune 2 right now and besides them both having the skyrim helmet i don't actually know how they're all at all connected um how so, they would be like how bethesda would find them to be you know yeah i mean elder scrolls they have a reputation so i don't know how that makes any sense but here they're saying uh, so they purchased all of Human Head's equipment and took over its leases. And Ragnarok is saying that they're in their equipment were were trade secrets and source code. So that's I think that's what what is causing this the big legal issue. Oh, I uh, I don't know. I wished them the best. Hopefully they'll get some of that sweet Microsoft money. But who knows if it's deserved? You know, when this stuff happens, it's just really. Yeah, well, you have I mean, to be kind of on the other side to know. Yeah, and well, here's the thing: it's the same thing. Like when a new alien shooter comes out, everyone calls it the Halo killer. Every time a new RPG comes out, everyone calls it like the the Elder Scrolls or Final Fantasy killer. And it's I don't know. It I guess it's in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, and every time a new Beanie Baby comes out, they call it a new you know Beanie Baby killer. We're all big fans of that. Yeah, every time um, a new Beanie Baby comes out, they call it the Beanie Baby killer. <laughs> yeah, because it's gonna kill the company. Okay, they should stop making Beanie Babies. Okay. They're not doing all right. No, no, good. I'm just uh, making sure you heard yourself. Uh, never listen to myself. Okay, that's, that's smart <laughs> to do. <laughs> it's smart to talk but not listen. Um, we're gonna take one quick breaky poo before we come back and talk about Mega Cat. Guys, I got to use the restroom real quick. So is it okay if we clap back in in one second? Yes. Or like, or okay, I'll be back in just like one minute. 
so Mina, I have just finished playing Yazzie, and uh, that is like one of the most addicting games I've ever played in my life. Oh really? I like I I don't know. It's it's so simple, but I can't stop playing it. Like it's it's a constant challenge to me. I'm so careful with addicting games. I still remember my uh, Sims experience. So uh, <laughs> I'm always <laughs> very very cautious. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, this is one that J James sent sent to me to review, and so like I'm, I don't know. There's something about like retro puzzle game, like puzzle games that like, I, I they frustrate the hell out of me, but I can't stop playing them. I don't understand it. Oh, I I totally feel you. I mean, it's kind of like me and my mobile games. Like, it's they're <laughs> all they all have the same basis too. It's like connect three match four or whatever and i can't stop playing them i just can't yeah and then like when uh, i don't know how it is for you but like when i fail at something i dream about it and i can't stop until i finish it the next day have you ever had that experience that you've been playing a game too long and then you're like walking around in real life and you're just kind of like oh i should check out this area because it's highlighted or oh i need to like <laughs> double jump here <laughs> yes yes <laughs> I don't know what you guys talked about, but hopefully you kept recording because I'm going to throw that at the very, very, very end of the episode and just cut out where I say I had you to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> but please leave um, in the part where you said you have to throw up. That's what I'm... Uh, yeah, I'm going to put that in. That's the I'm going to edit that in. That's what podcast, I was looking for. Record it separately. Yeah. Um, real quick, Mina, what time zone are you in? Are you uh, guys West Coasters, East Coasters? East Coasters, yeah. Oh, neat. Okay, so it's it's dark over there. That's Look at crazy. We are literally all over the country. Brank is know, on the crazy. West Coast. I'm in the center, and Mina's on the East Coast. I'm that actually in is... Florida, guys, just so you can okay. judge me a bit. <laughs> yeah, I know. What are you talking about? Florida has no problems. It's uh, everybody. Never, nobody's ever heard of Florida, man. Super uh, classy. <laughs> you know, we're we're super classy down here. <laughs> it it does seem though, like weather-wise, to be like a nice place. The only thing I don't know if I could deal with is the humidity. Which... I mean, weather-wise, if you like it raining randomly every five minutes and then I love that. blazing sun, yeah, sure, it's awesome. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Brank well, can't I... deal with humidity or humility, so it's, yeah, all, it's I, all good. I hate the the H's, man. They call it that. I hate them. <laughs> um, I'm only big on... I'm big into H, though, but just not humility or humidity. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, I... California makes you miss rain. Um, I that is the one thing I missed. I, I lived in China for a while. That's the one thing I missed from there is, is having some rain. Um, this has been awesome. I mean, I'm so glad you joined us too. Oh, I'll probably say this exact same thing again at the very end. But yeah, I we haven't done this interviewing somebody since we kind of brought everything back and we took like a, about a year and a half hiatus. But we used to interview like I don't know if you've played Shadow Tactics or. Uh, uh, what's where, that game where the water tastes like wine where, where the water tastes like wine or flint hook or yeah we interv for a while there we got to interview a lot of cool people it just we stopped doing the podcast for a while because it was uh i don't know i guess it was just hard time wise we so. were adulting so hard that we couldn't uh <laughs> <laughs> we just well, couldn't so now you know. guys have me on i you know I have just started doing interviews uh on behalf of mega cat just just this year and it's kind of one of my oh. favorite parts of uh of my task list because i get to meet new people and usually everyone's yeah. really nice i haven't had a bad experience yet like so well we'll change that okay the goal here now is <laughs> now that we know you haven't had a bad experience the goal now is to make it a bad yeah. experience yeah so i mean if i'll me come back if, extra mean if mina quits tomorrow <laughs> then you can take credit for that <laughs> mina have you uh have you ever watched the office oh my god of course i love the it, office it, I just love that scene where Michael's uh, trying to get the guy to do an internship. And he's like making fun of Bam and saying terrible, horrific things. And he's like, w brings him close. And he's like, I never say this to her face, but she's actually a wonderful person and a talented artist. And Oscar's <laughs> like, why wouldn't you say that to her face? <laughs> I love that idea of just being completely rude to somebody and then actually like loving them and being really respectful when they're not around. Um, <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll clap us back in, and yeah, uh, we'll pr I'll probably just start with blanket, like, hey, what's you know, what do you do as a community manager? Blah 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 blah. Okay. Stuff that you probably are talked you going to leave about. this in the podcast too, or uh, I'll I'll go through and edit. But like anytime I mention the bathroom, oh, so there's just going to be like a bleep every time I say I went to the bathroom. So I'm going to keep saying it over and over. Yeah, again. So no, they won't assume bleeps. anything at all. <laughs> yeah, they well, actually, I mean, honestly, most podcasts have a break. Okay. Get off my back. Okay, All right. Josh? All right, just okay. continue on. Um, okay, okay. So, three, two, one. Frank was in the bathroom. Ooh.
<laughs> okay, we will uh, cut that out. And uh, thankfully, I edit this podcast, so I'm the one who makes the call. Um, well, the topic today is actually really, really interesting. Normally, we've just been doing lists and quizzes with that Josh fails every single time. But today, we've got a new quiz. Now, uh, we're interviewing Mina, or we're not really interviewing, just discussing about Mega Cat, game development, your role in the studio, all that jazz. So I want to kick it off with the question that you probably had a million times. What is Mega Cat Studios? So Mega Cat Studios is number one amazing. It's a creative, creative first uh, game development company. We we're indie. We make mm -hmm. both retro and modern titles. So okay. lots lots of cool stuff, you know. What uh, what's a title that you've worked on recently or that you guys have released recently? So our most recent release, uh, you may have seen a little bit on our Twitter, is Bite the Bullet, which I had such an amazing time being on the team working with that because not only is the gameplay so much fun, but we actually had a lot of input from not only celebrity chefs, but we had competitive eaters. We had a bunch of food streamers on with us as well. And it really was, you know, our love letter to the intersection of food and games. So you piqued my interest. What is Bite the Bullet? Because I did not expect that when you said celebrity chefs and all these other people. What is this game about? I so need to know. Bite the Bullet is a run, gun, and eat where every enemy is edible. And depending okay. on your diet, it not only affects your character development and skill tree, but your character will also gain or lose weight depending on what you're eating. Your abilities okay. will vary. There's four different classes. Um, we've got the carnivore, we've got the omnivore, we've got the robivore, and then we have the vegetarian uh, skill tree. So you you could get abilities like be still as a tree, which actually makes you invisible. There's another there's another um, boost where you can run with your mouth open, so you don't actually have to fight anyone. You can just devour the enemies as you run across. Oh wow, that sounds really neat. Yeah, it's super cool. We were, I think it was, we were three years in development for this game. Um, so we, we took a lot of inspiration from Contra, sorry. <clears throat> we took a lot of inspiration from Contra, Metal Slug, and, you know, the entire team got together and was bringing their experiences into this title. And, and I mean, everyone should go check it out. <laughs> Yeah, what's it on? I mean, I, I kind of know, but I want you to tell us. So it is on PC, Xbox. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on Switch, and we will be coming to PlayStation eventually. Okay, I, stuff like that, if you can't tell us, I totally understand. But that's the thing that Josh and I will theorize and hypothesize about all the time on this show. Why is it on certain, like, what pushes it to be on certain consoles first that you guys decide, like, hey, we're going to release on these, and then later we're going to come to this one? So what that what that comes down to is is the deals that we end up making. Obviously, mm. releasing on Steam is always, like, a great idea. Um, yeah. But we do, sign, we do sign deals with certain companies that they'll ask for exclusivity first. It also takes time to get these certifications and approvals for these yeah. things to go through. So... As much as we would love to release them all at once, it's sometimes it's just not possible. Yeah. Uh, Josh, you've played quite a few of their games. Have you played by the bullet? I have not. I have a uh, I have a review code, but I haven't gone to it yet. So I am uh, I'm I am, sorry, Mina. Forgive my friend. It, I know. It, I'm like slacking it. off. <laughs> I'm I'm really excited to play it though. I've been actually like looking forward to hopefully sitting down and playing that this weekend. So we've actually talked a lot about the retro games that you guys have made on this podcast, and uh, Josh's a big fan, and he mentioned that some of these games are playable on the Sega Genesis. Is that correct? Some yes, of the older they, titles? There, there are some titles out there that are portable. Uh, we, that's kind of one of our, our lifeblood is, is making some of these cartridges for the older consoles. Um, they are limited run, so you do want to be quick and buy them while they're still available. Um, okay. But... It, there's just something great about being able to get, you know, one of these newer titles in cartridge form, getting that whole experience of blowing into it. I don't know. Yeah. If, if you are a retro fan and you have that nostalgia, it just it just gives it this extra dimension to your gameplay. So one of my questions or, or oh, so go ahead. Oh, I was, was going to say, so, yeah. So I, when I was sent, I've sent games by you guys. And the first one I played was Arcagus Revolution and like, there was something weird so I, I came home on a Friday night kicked my shoes off 
sat in a chair and turned on the Sega Genesis and I was back in elementary school again. Like it felt so great. And I remember just sitting there being like infinitely frustrated by this game, but it was the same thing with playing a Sega Genesis game, right? So like I just had to keep playing over and over again until I eventually got to where I wanted to be in the game. And uh, it w I, I had a lot of fun with it. Oh, you guys did Tanglewood. Is that correct? Is that one of your games? Let me, Mina? Let me double check that before I say that it is. Because I'm, I'm on your guys' website right now, and I read a lot of press. If this is the Tanglewood that I, I think it is, where you play as a fox, um, this was like kind of one of the earlier, or I don't know if it's earlier, but it was one of the newer examples of like games that were new coming to an old console like Sega Genesis. If uh, I'm pretty positive this is the Tanglewood that I read about a few years ago. That's that's really really neat. Um, I mean, it's on your guys' website, so I will assume definitely. We true. we also one of the things that's important to remember with Mega Cat is not only do we have our own. Uh, creative games that we create we work with partners a lot too as well oh so we yeah like so we definitely try to you know put our finger in every every pot that allows us um so i i can't tell you right now if that was one of our games directly or if it's a partner game um i okay. definitely will check into that but i i have been seeing a lot of talk about it on twitter i'm really excited for people to really enjoy it and and kind of like what josh was saying there's this whole like time travel aspect to playing these older games on the, the on the console. Um, it really does take you back to childhood. And I think that's one of the greatest parts about what we do is kind of giving those feelings back to people. Yeah. What what makes you guys decide which console to put it on? Because I'm seeing you guys have some Super Nintendo, some NES, some Sega. Like, is that is that at the beginning of the creation process? Do you guys meet and decide hey, we're going to make a game for X, or do you make the game and then see, hey, can we put it on X or whatever, you know, the console is? So it, it varies from time to time. There, there are times that we will create a game and then we'll be like, okay, let's see if we can get it on here or, mm -hmm. or there or wherever. Definitely there are times that we, we come out with a specific console in mind. Obviously, each console is a little bit different. Um, yeah. You know, like if you're playing with, uh the switch or something specifically there are going to be differences in the development process because there's certain things that need to be added in um but it, like i said it varies it all depends i mean i do have to admit it is a lot of times us sitting around and being like okay here's our idea where, where can we stick it <laughs> okay yeah because it's it's really impressive but i i first i thought you guys were just doing uh mega drive ports but it seems like there's also some Super Nintendo ports you guys have done and some NES ports and tons of different stuff that I, I'm kind of impressed, like having to work with that many types of cartridges and old consoles that are really difficult to test sometimes. Like, I, I, I'm not entirely sure how you even test on these consoles. I, I haven't done the, the work to see what you do to do that, but that's, that's really impressive alone, let alone then making a, hopefully a fun game. Um, what is one of your favorite Mega Cat games that you've ever played, Mina? So right now, my top favorite is definitely Bite the Bullet. But mm. another one that definitely caught my fancy was Coffee Crisis. And we oh. have Log Jammers that's going to be out soon, I believe. Um, that one was also a lot of fun, too. Um, I just kind of like to try everything. And since I work at the company, I can get the keys. So, <laughs> so yeah. I, I, just, I just try to play it all. <laughs> Guys, listen, guys at the company, she's taking all the keys. Don't let her have the keys. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's, that is a really, that's kind of a cool perk, trying out this stuff, seeing how it's made. Um, this is kind of an inside baseball question, but I have to ask, do you, do you guys use your own engine? Do you, do you know if the team uses Unity? Do you know if there's, like, Unreal? Do you know what they program in? I'm always, like, curious about stuff like that. So, since I'm not part of that actual mm -hmm. area, I can't say yeah, with no. all certainty, but I do know that when I was first onboarded and I had asked about it, they were like, you know, start off with Unity, learn how to use that. Um, mm -hmm. But that's that's a secret, I guess, because they have not told <gasps> me what engine we're working on, so. <laughs> we gotta know that secret! Okay, now we have a secret to figure out. You mentioned that you're a community manager. What's the day-to-day -day like for you? So my day basically it involves talking to people all day long emails discord chats twitter reddit i'm all over the place and it, it's a lot of fun i especially have a lot of exposure with the streamer community um mm -hmm. 
And I absolutely, I absolutely love Twitch streamers, YouTubers. They are such a great bunch. Um, and the other thing that I mainly focus on as well is, you know, the marketing portion. So we'll get the stream team together. We'll put out some social posts. Obviously, like I do a little bit of writing as well, but mainly it revolves around getting people's attention and hmm. keeping it, of course. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's incredible. I think that sounds like a fun thing. I mean, you know, here we hate talking to people and we wish we'd never had to talk to another <laughs> right. human again. But, I mean, there's got to be people like you out there that actually want to talk to people. So I'm glad that you exist. <laughs> Thank um, you. Josh, what is something that you've always wanted to know about Make a Cat? I mean, so how how do you guys decide like what type of game you're going to play? Is it or not play, but make? Is it something that like you go to the board of like what you guys enjoyed playing as kids, or is it something that uh, you kind of do a little bit of market research? How does that how does that work? So with every game, we always draw on our earlier experiences. We take what we loved in games and try to bring it there. Um, of course, there's a little bit of market research involved, and as as well, working with IPs, we kind of brainstorm with our partners on what what they want their game to look like as well. We have several new titles that are going to be coming out, none of which that I can talk about just yet, so you guys will have to have me back on so I can spill yeah. some secrets. Okay. <laughs> we'll do it. But, twisting our arm here, okay? <laughs> but, but there's some really great, exciting stuff on the forefront, and having been part of some of the creative processes it really it really comes down to what catches our attention what catches our fans attention we use a lot of user feedback so our discord which we're trying to grow the community larger now um we really do take our beta testers seriously and they help us create that game as well so it's, it's pretty much a group effort when it comes down to it since we're in like a unique system right now where we can't physically be near each other how do you guys get the type of q a that you'd like to get done without being able to have bring people into a room have them test it because that's if i'm correct that's how q a used to be right you'd probably bring someone in and they would play the game that way you didn't have to worry about them taking the game or putting it up on the internet or whatever beforehand well especially now with with the covid pandemic um, things have changed a lot, but Megacow has always been a, a company that has been spread all over the globe. I mean, there's some of us in Pittsburgh. There's some of us here in Florida. We have people in foreign countries that are working with us. So we, we kind of depend a lot on technology for this. And of course, you know, there's always a risk somebody's going to show the game. But one of the things that we've been very lucky with is is we've gotten people involved with us that really believe in what we're doing. So they're, they're not looking to kind of leak this kind of information. Um, mm. So, so yeah, I mean, like it, it's all basically like Slack, Discord, Skype, emails. Of course, everyone who's in the main office at HQ, they have the benefit of like hanging out with each other. Um, but as a company, as a whole, we're, we're scattered all over the globe and always have been. Are you guys based out of Florida? Is that where the main office no, is? No, we're based out of Pittsburgh, actually. Oh, okay. Got to get those Steelers. Everybody's big sports fan here, okay? If you probably <laughs> could tell. <laughs> Super sports fans is our name. Um, that is uh, that's really really neat. Um, what do you? What are you like most? Well, you can't talk about it yet. Um, which product besides the two that you've enjoyed playing have you been? the most excited to complete and get out there and market? Is it like the, the two that you've talked about that you enjoy or, or which well, one have you had the most uh, in-depth hand in? So actually, I can actually talk about this and we are going to be coming out with a game pretty soon. We're working with a partner of ours, Bound Games. They're actually mm -hmm. coming out with a skateboarding game that uses your cell phone to okay. perform tricks. Actually, on the 27th of this month, we will be opening up our Kickstarter launch, uh, launch our Kickstarter campaign. Um, oh, neat. So people will be able to back the project. The demo is going to be available out there. And I'm, I'm really excited about this because I don't know if you if you guys ever experienced this, but I remember when I was a kid, we had these little, like, fingerboard skate like decks. decks and every, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the little tech course. decks. And we would play with that all the time. And now as an adult, it's like you can't really be walking around with a little tech deck, you know, like that's going to What are you talking bit... <laughs> about? Of course you can walk around with a tech deck uh, and be cool. Yeah. Well, I, the, what I really love about this is that you can use your phone for it. So it, it's a very, like, discreet way that, like, you can play this because, you know, somebody walks into their room and you're like, oh, not just on a phone call. Like, totally wasn't, like, doing a, 
uh, grind or a 360 with my cell phone. Well, that that sounds awesome. And for the people who listen to this, it's the 28th now, so you should know that. So you should check out this Kickstarter. So you said it's gonna be up on the 27th, right? Yes. There will be a whole. It will be funded by then, hopefully, by the 28th, by the time people listen to this and they can check it out. And are there any? You probably can't even talk about the rewards yet, can you? Because that's probably a secret, secret thing. That is that is still a secret right now. But mm. I can kind of give a couple of hints. Um, oh, actually. We're not, this doesn't go live till the 28th and none of us have social media presence. So if there's something you want to talk about. Okay, great. Awesome. So some of the rewards are actually really awesome. I particularly am excited for the real life skate decks that are going to be offered up for backers. Um, So that sounds awesome. Yeah. So you can get your own scap skateboard. Um, We also have, and this, this is also a great, super funny pledge uh, reward that they're going to do. We we're, considering um having oh actually i can't talk about this oh no i can't talk about this i'll I'll make sure to cut that out i'll cut that (laughs) i caught myself it's so good too oh man can i sit can i keep you in there saying it's so good because that's the only thing that we have to know is there's something secret it's awesome we will find out about it when can you tell us the time frame it's quarter four this year next year that we'll find out about some of this neat stuff Definitely, this game's going to be coming out, if I believe, and everything works out perfectly. It's going to be yeah. coming out in 2021 if everything goes right. Um, okay. You guys will definitely be hearing a lot more of the things that I can't talk about today within okay. the next six months, actually. Right. And Ooh. hopefully okay. we'll get we'll get a lot of awesome brands involved in this as well. That that always sounds really neat. It, do you spend a lot of time emailing these brands to like try to get them on board, or is that something where you delegate and somebody else is doing that? Like, who contacts these people? It right now it's actually me, and it's so it's so funny because some of these brands are are really well known, and even though I'm not particularly involved in skateboarding, I think the last time I skateboarded I was like 14. You still mm-hmm. recognize some of these names, so there's always this kind of kind of like hesitation when you're writing your email like I always double check my emails like four times I'm like do I sound professional enough to be (laughs) to be approaching these people yeah it's it's kind of crazy because we live in such a connected world um that you can you can really approach anybody you want I I remember when I was real quick side story I when I was recording my first album I there was a uh, Daft Punk had just released uh, Random Access Memories, RAM, and I was a big fan of the mixing on it. So I reached out to uh, the mixer for that album, uh, Mick, uh, oh man, Mick Gazowski, I want to say his name is. Anyways, he was no- he's known as Magic Mick, and he's done like a lot of other number one albums, and he was like the sweetest dude ever. I didn't end up going with him because he was extremely expensive, but it was like, just so cool that you can actually talk to a lot of people nowadays. It's really possible to talk to those big brands that you're looking into and have that opportunity to like maybe work with them. You know, it's, it's not an impossibility. Oh yeah, definitely. One of my, one of my favorite experiences so far was, you know, to bring it back to bite the bullet. I was actually one of the people that was reaching out and doing interviews with some of the celebrity chefs. And I got to talk to Mark Matsumoto, who I had been watching for years already and I was fangirling so hard I mean just so so hard there was also chef David Thomas he was a two-time champion if I'm not mistaken it was on Chopped which is so cool because I'm so addicted to like food shows and oh I love them it's it's so it's it's a really great experience but you also have to be careful because just because you can talk to anybody doesn't mean you should (laughs) Yes. Oh, definitely. I totally agree with you. But if you're like looking to do this, you know, outreach and sponsorship and stuff, or you actually have a product that you're making and you need to get to that, you know, goal line, it's nice that nothing's out of the realm of possibility. It's just financially is it possible. Um, Speaking of food shows real quick, just because I have to ask, did you ever watch the show Worth It, Mina? Worth It. Uh, Tell me what I watched so many of them. Explain the premise to me. It's, it was on, I want to say, oh, what is that? It's like, oh, what's that show company called worth it? Is oh, BuzzFeed. It's by BuzzFeed. And what it is is these people go around, they try three different items at different price levels. Um, whether it's like, oh, chicken, barbecue chicken. Oh, yeah, place yeah. Try. That it's, show it's is one... one of my favorite food shows. It's the, it's the, it's like the br- brown haired guy. And it's the other yep. dude who has like the swoopy hair. Oh, my God. I watch that on YouTube all the time. 
yeah, I, I love that type of show because it's just like, oh, hey, they're going to try three different things and they're going to tell you if it's worth it. Food shows are the best and that makes Bite the Bullet sound even more fun, like being able to work with those people. Um, Josh, did you have any questions to ask? Because I feel bad I've been bogarting all these questions myself before we start getting to the wrap up. You got any qu questions for Mina? Is he still there? His screen looks I... empty. I think he is right there and I was a fool. <laughs> Oh, Mina, that's what I get for looking at another screen and not <laughs> realizing <laughs> that he's gone. Now I get to edit some more. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask you another thing uh, before he comes back. Then. Okay. Um, so when you're working on these games, do you guys have an in-house composer or who works on the music? Are the developers also musically inclined, the people who make it, and they're the ones who decide that thing? Or do you guys help with getting them to the finish line? So it, it's a variety of things. We obviously have outreach with, you know, famous musicians that we, you know, mm -hmm. try to license their work. We do have some in-house people that are musically inclined. Okay. <clears throat> but, but something that awesome that I love about our company is that we like to get freelancers all of them. Um, so we'll, yeah. we'll find people that, you know, we maybe see them on YouTube or maybe they're on uh, – uh, Reddit, and we'll reach out to them. And we've actually had some great experiences getting some of these lesser known content creators to add music to it. Actually, in Bite the Bullet, we did some, uh, we actually have a synthwave mode, and we there are four different bands that oh. participated with us. They're actually like in the game as Easter eggs. And their music actually plays in this mode. Everyone should go check it out. Like, I'm not, you know, if you're not into Synthwave, it doesn't matter. It sounds amazing. Go listen to it anyway. Yeah. That reminds me of that uh, really huge band that kind of kicked off Synth, kind of kicked off, like, retro Synthwave. Uh, Anamana Gucci, I want to say their name is. They use Game Boys to create uh, their sound. I don't know if you're familiar with them, Mina. Um, but that, I always found that to be really, really neat, um, using Game Boys to create sound. Um Josh, I've been bogarting this time with Mina. Do you have any questions for her? Uh, yeah, actually, I do have one. Do you guys? So I've noticed that you guys do a lot of like, um, you know, two D type games and platformers. Do you have any? You know, are there any plans to like do something in the realm of three D? You know, we're always looking for new ideas, and of course, there there are things in the works. It does take a long time to create a game, so I want you guys to understand mm -hmm. that the timeline of this stuff is not a few weeks or a few months. It takes years. One day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like if hour. we could do, uh, if we could make games like... in one day, we we would. But it definitely takes so much time, and and there is actually a difference in the development between two D and three D games. Hopefully, in the future, we'll be able to expand more into that realm. Um, and of course, as always, if anybody's listening to this and you just desperately want us to make those games, flood our inboxes with it because we do take those things into consideration when planning our projects for the year. Yeah, I think that's super neat. Yeah, I, I would love to see you guys keep trying new things. It seems like you guys are always doing something interesting. I'm like looking at your website a lot. I wish I would have done this before, but there's so many cool games. You guys need to check out megacatstudios.com. Um, yeah. Do you have any other things to add before we start to wrap this thing up, Josh? Uh, no, I mean, so you're talking about a lot of the, uh, retro style games are limited release. How long do those usually run for before you guys take them down? Well, we don't really take them down. Even if they're sold out, we still leave them up there. Number one, because we do bring, bring back the runs again later. Okay. Um, if there's enough desire for it, um, <clears throat> What was the second part of that question? <laughs> oh, no, I was just asking, you know, th that was my question. And then also, you guys have an arcade cabinet out, don't you, for Bite the Bullet? We do, and we actually we actually do these as custom orders as well. So it, it's something that if you wanted one of our games made into an arcade cabinet, you can easily reach out to us, and we can get that set up for you. Okay, all right. That's, that, that's awesome. That is crazy neat. Um, Mina. We would like you to plug every single thing that you would like to plug to all of all of our listener. And they will be very excited <laughs> to hear this. Well, the listener is waiting. 
I definitely want to invite everyone to check out Bite the Bullet. Um, We're actually running a charity campaign with Feeding America. They're a hunger relief organization here in the United States. Um, We've got about six weeks left in that campaign where we're raising funds. We are about almost about halfway to our 10K goal. Um, So if you're listening to this, please go to my link and donate money under my name so I look super cool. (laughs) (laughs) And as well, we are currently recruiting streamers for our megacat.tv website, which will Mm. be featuring our megacat streamers 24-7 every day of the week. Um, And yeah, that's about it. I mean, like, I I hope everyone kind of keeps keeps following us and seeing what else we're coming up with. I definitely know that we have some major announcements coming up within the next year of some amazing titles that I know you guys are going to be going crazy for. Um, I'll definitely drop ready. (laughs) I'll drop some review copies once it's ready. Um, But yeah, other than other than that, you know, that's about it. (laughs) Well, Mina, we've loved having you on, but if people want to tell you how much they love you or tell you how much they loved us, how can they reach you? Are you on any type of interwebs, any type of social storms or whatever they call them nowadays? So you guys can find, if you guys were to message the Mega Cat Twitter, I'm actually the person who most of the time is responding back to you there. You can Wait, also find- your Mega Cat Twitter? <laughs> I'm not responsible for everything, but yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm also you, you can also catch me on Twitch. I I stream under Prayer Beats and okay. you can find me on our Discord as well. Of course, if you guys really want to reach out and kind of yell at me because you haven't received your games yet. Cuz we love you. <laughs> you yes. can always mess, email me at mina at megacatstudios.com. Mina at megacatstudios.com. We love that. We are going to reach out to you and tell you how great it was. Um, it's just going to be me and Josh just <laughs> constantly barraging the uh, your guys' <laughs> email. So I hope you guys are ready for it. We're super excited. Um, no, it was it was honestly a blast to have yeah, you on. Yeah, seriously, you thank have, you. Yeah, if you have anything else uh, coming out, please join us again as we chat about stuff, mainly games. That's something I really want to get and, rid of on this and podcast. And Spock, apparently, as you were saying earlier. And, well, I mean, I'm a big fanfic guy. I do all the fanfic for stuff. So uh, everybody knows that, though. Find me on fanfic.biz. Um, it is the new collection. Everybody loves it. I'm going to start working on my Mega Cat fanfic stuff here, too. So uh, we can add that to the thread. Um, but yeah, we love y'all. We can't wait to talk to you more about some of these sweet games. And I think with that, we are out of here. Peace.